up, please welcome to the stage, Emmanuel Griffin. Uh, this is the equal opportunity part of the show. <laughs> and as he said, I've got to go to work after this because I work for the NHS. Yeah. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> I've had enough of that shit. <laughs> to start off with, it was brilliant. I was like, yeah, I was like, woo, clap. No, you're heroes too. Just stay in. Yeah. <laughs> then after a while, it just got a bit like... <sighs> <laughs> because the part of the NHS I work for is what we call the sexual health clinic. <laughs> I know some of you are recognising me now. <laughs> Please come back in. Your results are in. No, because working for the NHS, you tend to get recognised in the most weirdest places. Because I was in a club, yeah, and this girl came up to me and says, where do I know you from? I was like, oh, I don't know you. Because if I tell her where I know her from, that's breach of her confidentiality. So I was like, no, nah, you don't know me. Don't worry about it. Move on, yeah? <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was it for the rest of the night, yeah? But she comes back with four of her friends. Where do we know him from? <laughs> Is he a footballer? <laughs> Is he a grime artist? <laughs> I'm like, look, you don't know me. I don't know you. I don't know you from anywhere. Please just leave me alone. <laughs> you're you're cock blocking me now. <laughs> and like, so fast forward to Monday morning, guess who comes walking in? I say, oh, do you recognize me now? <laughs> you know, being back in the gym is excellent, and I love it. But the other day, yeah, this really big, muscly, bald guy was just looking at me while he was working out. I was like, <sighs> just looking at me like that. I'm thinking, he's either racist or gay. <laughs> you know, because the eyes of desire look the same when you're working out, you know. <laughs> you can't tell the difference. So I'm like, I'm, I'm from Leighton, yeah, so I'm... I can't take this. This guy's just looking at me. So I'm thinking to myself, if I get up and say, Oi, what are you looking at? Either one or two things are going to happen, yeah? At least one thing I know, the next day I'll be walking funny. <laughs> but at least out of one of those two scenarios, I'll have a bottle of, I'll have a bottle of Prosecco in my stomach. <laughs> so fast forward, I'm in the steam room now. This guy comes walking in and goes... Do I know you from somewhere? <laughs> so it turns out he wasn't gay or racist. It was just some guy with an STI. <laughs> you know, but during the lockdown, yeah, it was very tough. It was very tough. I picked up three things. And those three things were TikTok, acid, <laughs> and a celebrity beef. You know, not all of those in the same order. But first of all, I took acid. And then acid makes you dance. And I was thinking, what can I dance on? I can't go anywhere. Oh, I'll make a TikTok account and dance on there. You know, so I'm watching back all the TikTok accounts in the morning after I recover, and it's just me going, look at the colors dance, man. It's all dancing. And it was just, it was just so surreal. And I watched like eight hours of Donald Trump videos. You know, all I'm saying is, acid makes you right wing. <laughs> You know, but growing up in Leighton is tough because when I was born, the doctor said to my mum, don't get too close to this child. He's not going to last 24 hours. Well, 40 years later, my mum still takes the doctor's advice. <laughs> I'm like, mum, love me. She's like, no, we not love you. I'm like, why? The doctor said to me, love you, you feel dead. It's either that or she's just Jamaican. I don't know what's the difference. <laughs> because the thing is, I'm 45% Bayesian and 45% Jamaican and 10% Irish. Yeah, I could be related to any one of you. <laughs> <laughs> 
And the thing is, how did that Irishman sneak into my, to my home? Huh? Did he river dance in? <laughs> Who's your paddy? Who's your paddy? You know, I can say that.